given to man to give up, given to man to stop. But when a man is consistent and continuing, then a spirit is involved. A spirit is helping that man. Guess what? It is in seasons like this that you lay hold on those matters. I never knew what was happening those days. Every night I wake up, I cry. Give me the daring grace, the staying power. Men give up not because they want to, but they give up because they lack what it takes. They even want to, but it's no more there. Some of them will see you the way you are moving. They will say, you left us behind. You, are, you, know more, you don't remember us again. What they are saying is that there is no grace to tarry. We noticed that you continued. Why didn't you show us what you knew? You see, demons are not afraid. Witches are not afraid that you woke up one night and pray from 12 to 6 in the morning. They are more afraid that you wake up every night three hours. Because what you are doing is just beyond deliverance. You are creating a civilization, an atmosphere that we host so much of God that there is nothing like witchcraft that can survive in that atmosphere again. That place has become a holigolistic zone. That is what consistency does. It is in consistency that men are established in the present truth. The present truth and revelation and the outpourings that is coming from heaven and God's agenda to bring us into the new move is an effort in futility if men are not taught on the protocols of consistency and continuity because what God does by his spirit according to what happened in the book of Acts chapter 2 was that a new regime came as a result of the outpouring of the spirit and then new possibilities we are giving to the men that we are participants in those encounters but the fruit thereof is given to them that what continued it was when they continued the scripture said that there was comfort that they were established the establishment that God ordained that we should have as a result of the encounter is as a result of continuity is as a result of consistency we will just experience the embers just the flickers of the move of God if men are not taught consistency listen to me listen 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 listen, listen. now the challenge is this that when God begins to walk his workings is more like in seed form that is why anytime the scripture speaks he said that the kingdom can be likened unto a seed when the sower sows is a seed are you with me now and when the mustard seed comes it's still a seed because what God gives is potentials the capacity the possibilities of the potentials the seedlings that came as a result of the outpouring is dependent on consistency and continuity it took time and by the time we came to chapter six seven eight we found out that we are men like Stephen that even though his name was not in the register of the apostles but this man hid under the incubation of the holy spirit he said have you forgotten me lord what you did to peter do to me The same Holy Ghost, he realized that he wasn't different. After some seasons, he, we saw him reinvent a transport system that was lost. We thought that the ancient part that invented that transport has, has vacated the earth realm. But when Philip appeared, the, the Enoch transport arrived again. Because of Philip, we need pathfinders. When you become consistent, you become a pathfinder in the spirit. Men that research and find out the ancient past that we are lost. Our generation comes again and we decide to find the ways of our fathers. The pathways of revival, the pathways of consistency. The Bible says Solomon was speaking about the environment surrounding the building of the temple. He said, oh God, arise to your resting place thou 
thou and the ark of thy might. He said, the Lord has decided to dwell in thick darkness, but we have built a house for him. And because we have built a house, we can invoke his presence. We can invoke his might. We can invoke his glory. We have built a tabernacle. We can now host him. Our ambience is strong and all. Our secret place is strong and all. Our altar is strong and all. Listen to me. There are certain possibilities that is not given to men of consistency. What we will be seeing is just a little here, a little there of the flickers of God's mercy. It will seem as if God is more powerful in the life of your neighbor than your own. Your challenge is lack of consistency. Satan is not moved that you did it for one month. He is not moved that you did it for two months. He is not moved. He is not moved because he knows that the water it takes for you to draw down the hand of God is a three years consistency in priesthood. So he knows that the measure of grace that you have to tarry is not enough to cross you over the river. So he is waiting for you. You think he's it and wrong. No, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Pray for one minute. Give me tarrying grace, tarrying power. When others are giving up, I will be mounting and strength. The Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord, they are like they, 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 they mount up with wings as the eagles. Oh my God. And they put a cup of tire. Even the youth shall faint. The young men shall be with it. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall mount up with wings as the eagles. They will run, they will not be tired. They will walk, they will not be faint. Oh God, we receive the testimony of consistency. We receive the testimony of continuity. We receive the grace to tarry, to tarry until the heaven comes down. Just continue. Many things we break off. Many things we stop on their own accord. It is not by the will of man. Semenai, prekota kambra, sabata tata badata, kabata tata badata. We wait, we wait to see your face. We wait to hear your voice by the river. We wait, we wait to see your face. We wait to hear your voice by the river. We wait, we wait to see your face. We wait to hear your voice by the river. We wait. <laughs> God must teach us the art of waiting again. The art of waiting. Teach my spirit away. <laughs> the psalmist said, Wait down, God, all oh my spirit. Wait, wait. No, no, no. You can't stop now. You can't stop now. Iman terete sasalia, rata papina tala batalia, yabaka panatalia. Your family members, they are waiting for you to stop. Your relatives are waiting. Your friends are waiting. Your village are waiting. Ah. Satan is waiting. 
They say they give you one year. They give you two years. They say when you finish from campus, the fire will go down. When you finish your youth service, the fire will go down. When you marry, the fire will go down. Is it true? Is it true? Is it true? Give me the tearing power. The tearing grace. The tearing answer. We will not stop. chapter 18 verse 1 he said for men ought always to pray and not to faint the key word there is always it is not in the praying it is in the continuity it's only men that know how to continue that we see the power in prayer you see you will never know how powerful prayer is you can only read it in books but you will never experience it in your life until you continue it's only there that we see that prayer can get anything done that God can do. Prayer, there is power, the power of prayer. Yes, that is that is the power of prayer. And it's only men of consistency that can find out the power in prayer. So Jesus said that there is a certain woman in a city. The context was even outside of the kingdom yet the, 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 the factor of importunity cannot be taken away from a man that desires to have his result nothing can stop you if you are importunate nothing can stop you if you are consistent if you continue you will have it listen to me if you continue you will have it no demon in hell can stop a man that decides not to stop all Satan can do to you is to make you to stop because he knows that at this part that you are set up 
continuity and consistency in opportunity is a universal law it's even it's even something that men outside of the scope of the kingdom understands when men gathered at the tower of Babel and they said let us build a tower that can reach the heavens the scripture said that even God looked down from heaven he said we need to scatter their language because these things that these men have set their heart to do nothing can stop them what have you set your heart on when you set your heart on it then you become consistent the scripture said that this man is an unjust judge he neither believes god nor man but a, a woman a woman a widow a widow that doesn't have any advantage in the natural men have looked down on her there is no neighbor no relative nobody to help you no connection but she had her knees when you have your knees, you are not disadvantaged. When you can pray, you are not disadvantaged. You are not mute enough. You are complaining, you are talking, you are thinking about many things, listening to many places. For how long will you continue to talk? Why not give yourself to your knees? After some seasons, the scripture said that even the unjust just said, I will answer this woman so that she will not weary my soul. I tell you, an importunate man can weary the hands of the immortals to begin to respond to the pant and desire of your heart the opportunity in your heart is a, is a weapon in your hands that you can use to lean on the immortals the immortals will respond if you are consistent oh! listen the scripture said there in verse 8 he said when he that will come will come shall he find faith it is not a debatable fact that he will come he said i set myself upon the watch let me see what god will speak the coming and the visitations of god is something that is already ordained in his agenda now the days that we come is dependent on conduits is dependent on altars is dependent on hearts filled with certain measure of desire the scripture said in the book of proverbs he said a man um, having having separated himself secret and intermittent with all wisdom that there is a separation that is there is a consecration and there is a, a desire to die unless you see the result he said i will come whether we come is not a debate the question is that you measure like the mortals the book of first peter said that don't count slackness as men count because god is not a man when we count and see massive tarries it's because we have not entered into the eternal realm, realm and understand his protocol his 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 reward system that as long as a man can stay ah what the mothers respond to is not just that you knocked what they respond to is that anytime they appear a man is on his watch i will stand on my watch i will not leave oh how we start oh 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 Listen, it is not debatable. Listen, it is not debatable whether God will come or not. That is one. And even when He comes, His intent is not about the moment. His intent is that you are established in the proceeds and riches that comes as a result of the moment. Are you with me? So when men don't understand this they will not understand the purpose of pentecost the purpose of the outpouring it is an attempt by god to open up a new window of possibilities that um, hitherto we are not open to us so god began to bring us to new layers of grace prayer grace understanding revelation 
prayer power. These are things that were not possible in your life before. Suddenly you notice that you are walking in new realm, new dimension, new phase. Now the and men that lack the understanding of God's intent, we think that that is the end of the matter. No, it is opened up to you so that you will be established. Establishment. That is the next stage that comes into the heart of a man as a result of the window that is opened up to you. Yes, that you function in something is not yet um, a guarantee that you will continue in it. God's intent is that he will take you to the point where you become a witness of the same matter that you have touched so that your identity will be unmoved with the same matter. You cannot be separated from the same experience. So beyond the encounter, the encounter is framed into your being. You are established in all the present truth. Establishment. So after the early church had many encounters, the scripture said that the apostles went from church to church, getting them established in the present truth. Because God, that is God's intention. God doesn't intend that after two years, it all happened because we were in an atmosphere. You know, there are people that is praying here because they are in an atmosphere. Then when you appear out, out over it, you start struggling. The reason is because you have not been established. What you have is atmospheric as a result of a superimposing influence that is beyond you. Now, God can't send you like that. We can't trust you in the kingdom. Because um, Satan can still influence the outcome of your life. Yes. And we never know whether you are established until certain matters begin to come into your life. If there is still a desire of a possibility of giving up, then you are not yet established. Because men that this thing has been worked into their mainframe, their testimony will be the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. For men ought always to pray. That is the testimony of Jesus. Such that even when he was coronated as the Christ and he was sitting at the right hand of the Father, the scripture still told us that even in that place he still interceded. So the prayer ministry is not something we stop, it is something that continues because that is the only way we can even sustain what we have laid hold on. By prayer, we lay hold, by prayer, we sustain. the progress that you will make in God's context is dependent on your capacity to press into the wisdom of God. 
You see, this wisdom actually comes to men that choose to be foolish in the natural. Anytime you decide to be wise in God, one of the things you will notice is that you will be consistently foolish in the natural. And after many seasons, after men have given their opinion about the choices that you have made and your foolishness, there is nothing in the... Sometimes, sometimes God will even forbid you from explaining to people why you made the choices that you made. Because they can't understand with their mortal capacity. When God tells a man to clear all his account, his foolishness. When God tells a man to give him your, your one year, his foolishness. His foolishness to stay in this, in this place and you are praying and fasting and doing nothing else since the year began. Is it not foolishness? It's foolishness. Because there are many things that is going through your head. Part of the number one dealing that God administers to you is for you to lose capacity on how to run your life using that mental strength. You lose capacity. And sometimes you look at yourself and say, am I not wasting? Am I not wasting? For the way of the Lord. I say you are not wasting. If it is God, his wisdom comes like foolishness. And most times men have to be foolish to understand his wisdom. Yeah. God will sometimes tell you to stay when you are supposed to go. And men will begin to ask you, why are you here? And sometimes you will be tempted to explain why you are there. In your explanation, that's how you will incur God's wrath. Because even explanation, he didn't permit you to explain to people. It is a dealing that will power you into a new face. When, it, when the new season unveils, men will begin to tell you, you are wise oh. That day you were doing that thing, we didn't understand what God was doing to you. That is why you can't explain to them. Their attempt to understand the dealings of God is from the natural plane. So they cannot enter into the wisdom. Show me. The Bible says, uh, oh, I'm, 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 I'm. Go down, go down fast. Are you sure this is where I'm looking for? Shut up, 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 up. Yes. He said, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are what? Among them that are what? You know, I have spoken about this word perfect many times. There is a dimension of wisdom a man cannot enter into. Except maturity comes into his heart. The administration is not by mental and cognitive capacity. It is something you enter into because your soul has been cultured in such an extent that he can be able to mirror God dimensions. Remember that God spoke to John. He said, ah, even John was a visitor. Actually, he's a man of the spirit. And the Bible says on that day that John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he heard a voice that told him what? That means there is an information. There is wisdom nuggets. There is download from the mainframe of heaven. That is about to come into his life and it's not just about him a generation will function by the same wisdom and a man wants to access that kind of wisdom at a lower energy plane as much as god wants to give you that kind of access he cannot all he will do is to tell you henry what come up 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 we know it is ordained for you but but you are you are very low we cannot give you this thing here yeah. You have to come up and when you are sent you will find out that your, your that your soul is consistent with the energy broadcast in that realm there are some things god will show you it there are some energy discharges that you will encounter in god it can kill you do you know do you know i went to a meeting and a young man told me that i want everything you have i i i laughed because he doesn't know what he's praying for. So I, 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 I took, I just laid hands on him. I said, God, give him a little, very, a little of what you gave to me. The young man almost died that day. He was rolled like crayfish. You know that, that stick they used to roll crayfish. And he, he, he was weeping. <gasps> after 15 minutes he was turning red in color and he was even increasing ah! I have to reach out to him I said reduce it Lord reduce it peace peace since that day the young man stopped 
praying that kind of prayer. Give me what you have. Your interest is not in what I have. Your interest is in the capacity. Because even if I give, you can't. And in the kingdom, we are not wasters. We are men that account for everything. In stewardship, a man has to be faithful. A man has to be accountable. If you cannot account for the investment of God's resources and the progress you have made as a result of that investment, that is, that is a wasted adventure. And God is not interested in men like that. So in as much as God wants to administer certain kind of wisdom, certain kind of revelation, certain kind of equipment, certain kind of pedestal, sometimes you look at your family and say, why don't you use me? Look at how things are going on. You go on seven days fast and say, God, after these seven days, I want things to change in my life. I want things to change in my family. After seven days, it seems as if, in fact, after seven days, you were attacked. And then you notice that your, your health started dropping his capacity. At that frame you are, you lack what it takes to be the deliverer. It is not as if God doesn't want to run deliverance, but you are not yet the man. You are supposed to be the man. You are ordained to be the man. But the man we are seeing now is not yet the man. The wisdom it takes for you to liberate your family is dwelling at an energy level that can only be assessed as a result of maturity, perfection. A progression and approximation into the nature and person and stature of Christ. When you enter there, then his administration will become spontaneous and subconscious. After some seasons, you will not even remember when you started working in the anointing. You just realize that the anointing came because you, you stepped into a place in the spirit where the anointing is the natural ambience, wisdom, capacity, favor, breakthrough. It's not a prayer. It's an ambience that a man carries. There are certain wise and intelligent spirits that you will communicate and interact with in, in the spirit. When you appear in the natural, those things will become your ambience. They will, they will rub off on you. Just like Moses, the Bible says that Moses came down from the encounter. He was not praying, let my face shine, oh God. Let me carry your, let me, my, let me carry your glory. Let men see me and fall down. No, just because of the reason of the depth of communion and encounter. He came out and the scripture said that he wished not. He never knew that his face shone. It was a byproduct. Many things we make our prayer points are supposed to be byproducts of intimacy, byproducts of obedience, byproducts of encounter, byproducts of great growth, byproducts of maturity. He said that we speak wisdom. Where? Where do we speak wisdom? Show me. Show me. Why did you leave my scripture? How be it we speak wisdom among them that are what? Now you know. Now you know why you have been asking God to speak in your life. Help you to understand. Show you this. It's not showing you. It's not because it doesn't want to. It will be a wasted investment. Because that kind of wisdom can only be trapped at a certain energy level. He said, why won't you approximate when you approximate to a certain level, you won't even remember when you started functioning in the wisdom. Because you cannot find yourself in that plane without interacting with that wisdom. Are you getting my point now? Can you be under the rain without being wet? No, it's not possible. So imagine when you are praying, all you need to do is get yourself under the rain. Get yourself under the downpour. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is a way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Imagine if you have gone to you service two to three years ago. It's since 2018. Imagine if you have gone since then. Then what set a man for evil? God has taken it and made it good. You would have just come and say, hey, hey, hey see, you will collect a lawyer and say, see my certificate, you know, I, so, so you will now, come and show me how you snap now. I, I saw your studio picture. That one is not certificate. There is a certificate they give men in the spirit that you have passed out. There are men that, that NYSE gave certificate that God didn't give them and they left. 
<laughs> they, they left and they are crying, oh God, I am now, I'm now that I've finished you serving. What am I supposed to do next? There is no information. Because as far as heaven is concerned, you have not passed out. Oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to. <laughs> I say you have not passed out. Sometimes the reason why you had an extra year is because as far as God is concerned, you have not graduated. But the school can give you certificate and, and you run out. But you are not ready to run your destiny. As you are now, there is nothing you can carry for God. So where are you running to? It will, if you look where, you will see it's a blessing in disguise. Meanwhile, you are foolish now. So you think God is delaying you. And Satan will magnify that thing as a very big matter. Your eyes is not seen. When you see it, you make Satan to pay. There are ways to make Satan to pay. Yes, now. I was in my PBA and the guy said he will give he will make sure that I have extra months. They will even give me six months or what. For for some people, they will be they will be praying, oh God, hey, they want to give me extra year. I went that night, I smiled, I, I spoke in loud tongues. Come Thank God for six more months to press. <laughs> Satan released me. Because he knows the commotion I'm causing already. He doesn't need me again in that kind of place. You have not done if you do something well, Satan will graduate you. You will suddenly see your name in graduating list. You didn't take exam because of the havoc we are causing. They are looking for all means possible to bundle you out. You are not doing anything. Say you have a strike. Give yourself to priesthood long enough. That I'm telling you, there are men of God. Like, they will come and say they, 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 they will come in the secret and pass you. One of the greatest men of God in this south is you have heard me refer about to him many times. They came at the back and said, eh, now we graduate you. Go, go, go. Because of the havoc. It was then that he now left campus ministry. And up to now in UNN, we have not seen a, the depth he entered in campus ministry. In fact, he is, he is the template of an accurate campus ministry. Those days, he used to stay three, two weeks on Vet Mountain. And then comes down, he starts two weeks before, and two weeks after school have started, one month. And then when he comes down, he is the governor and mayor of the campus. Anywhere he appears, he's a king. He comes to the class, lecturer finished lecturing, he will start his own, opening deaf ears and blind eyes. He's in second year, third year. Oh guy, you are in what level? You are old, my friend. Go and cry for your life. Why will you leave Otoke? You your 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 feet is not planted in the sack. You cry today, show me the wisdom. Let my soul approximate to the tools and skills it takes for me to bring my feet into the sands of time with the feet and power of the mothers. Any day they talk about this, they will remember me in the spirit. I will become a force to record, not in the natural, but in the spirit. Here's the way of wisdom. I choose the way. Of the Lord. My father called me. He said, You are an intelligent young man. Your future is bright. You need to find a job. You need to find an engagement. And I went and wrote many job applications. Now, this is my own dealing. So, when I, the last one, I, I passed the last exam and I didn't have rest. I didn't have rest. If it's not because of the fact that someone insisted, they would have dragged you back to that place. Guess your progress since that since the year started. Infinitesimal. And then one day in your sleep. The angel of the Lord will enter and remind you of the work you should have done. And then you see it, you begin to weep. Because it's not as if you don't want to do it. But where is the energy? We have come to giving birth. It is the day of giving birth that we know men that have the energy to travel. Yes. You think it's everybody. Every calling has a travel. The prophetic has a travel. The apostolic has a travel. In my own opinion, there are a few people that are called to the apostolic. They will end up with, possibly they will have the name, they will end up with the names. But they don't have what it takes to travel. There is an apostolic, yes. There is a travel to bet that. 
it's not everybody doesn't get there. In fact, in my own opinion, they are so scarce because it will leave scars in you. Something that will deaden you forever. It, it will push you to the to the limit of your life. To the point that everything around you will suffer as a result of your consecration. How many are willing to pay that price? The relationships, the work, the, everything around you will suffer as a result of the consecration. That is not the kind of life that you want to live or anybody wants to live. Even if you want to live it, your parents will tell you, be wise now. Huh? What was that thing your father told you? If you need power, let me take you to where they get power. <laughs> For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord.